Okay, I got something special today, and I'm kind of cheating, but I'm kind of not. This is a... Uh, uh, I haven't had a guest speaker on uh, during the pandemic. It's been kind of tough. Um, but this week and next week, I'm doing a two-part interview that I've already done with Francois Dutoy. Uh, this is a... Uh, um, uh, about an hour and 10 minute interview, but we're only going to do part of it today and then follow up next week with that. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy it because there, it seems like um, what we ended up talking about a year ago, because I think this recording was done almost a year ago. It's even maybe even more relevant today as I was re listening to it. I thought, man, this is good. And we can't, you know, I, I don't want to show a whole hour and 10 minutes to you. So I'm splitting it up and you're getting part one today. So I'm just going to switch to this uh, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, the, the, just remember, the front end is really casual for just a moment. We're just getting set up before we dive into the topic. So you're getting it as real as it was when it was live. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, conversation. I'll see you at the end when the video segment part one is done. Dig in and enjoy. Hey, hey. Mike. So it works. wonderful to see your face, my brother. Here we are. Oh, my goodness. How <laughs> are you? On the other side of the planet. You know what I'm going to need to do? I've rigged up this little thing. But I'm going to need an earphone. <laughs> sure. Now I've got you. I can hear okay, you. Okay, now you can hear me. Perfect. You don't Amazing. need a shout. I've got you, man. How oh, are you, my, my dear brother? Precious I'm really friend. good. How are you? This is a pleasure meeting you. I've never met you. This is it face-to-face, -face, man. I know. <laughs> this is so wonderful. My, my golly. It's already getting slightly um, near dark on this side. Okay. Um, yeah, we've just come back from a marvelous walk. And um, yeah, it's great to connect with you and great to, to have this opportunity to communicate. Uh, what, oh what a my. day we live in. What a day we live in. <laughs> uh, I know. And we're forced to go online. We're forced to learn our technology skills. They have to be quickly. Home. Yeah, quickly. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was kind of getting ready for Zoom. And then I thought, well, I've never tried Be Live before. I love the well, word. The only reason I chose Be Live is because look, if you look at the screen, it changes the view, okay? It's just okay. it's, a, it's a nicer, cleaner look. And if I want to do this, watch this. Now I'm showing your book, all right? Like I'm able to switch and show what you all have. Right. I, I, like I, I wanted to show off your a couple of your books. So I can do that when I have this. However, Excellent, this man. Can you see all the switching around? Pardon? Can you see all the switching around? Are you able to um, see what I'm seeing? No, I, I just see you. Oh, okay, because yeah. I've got your this, book uh, on the screen. Oh, well, let me see. There's a switch where I've got to flick it. No. Oh, I just see your beautiful face. That's perfect, brother, as long as you can see it. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> uh, All right, I'll close that. Okay, well, hey, I, I honestly, I was uh, first things first, um, great to meet you first, but uh, my wife loves the Mirror Bible. That's that's all she reads. Like uh, it, it sits in the living room, and when everybody's gone, or she goes out to the swimming pool and sits by the pool and, and reads yeah. the mirror. So that's kind of cool. Fantastic, wonderful. Please do that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we, we met people yesterday for the first time in thirty years. They used to drive down over a weekend. There were several people when we had our ministry thirty years ago in in, in close to the Mozambique border. They okay. would drive down from other side of Johannesburg in Vanderbilt Park. And they actually met during one of those meetings where people would just come from Johannesburg and from all over, you know, to come and maybe spend a weekend with us. And yep. we, we still had the training facility then. And, um, and we met them now yesterday for the first time in 30 years. Wow. And it's just, it's just so amazing. They come from a little town where there's a fellowship that only engages with the Mirror Bible, you know. And, and so they, they didn't even realize that I, I was the author of the Mirror Bible. <laughs> they kind of just. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. It was just so fun to connect with them again. And we were going to go just for coffee yesterday morning. Yep. We spent five hours with them. We, we, we had five hours of just diving in, you know. It was wonderful. Wow. Anyway, my brother, I'm, I'm, you, you, you tell me what to do, and I'm there with well, you. Well, I got, I got two topics uh, I was hoping to address. Um, the first one, uh, I've been having conversations with different leaders and teachers uh, regarding this COVID-19 and all the fear that's been um, uh, yeah. brought to us through the media. How do we approach this uh, through a lens of grace and hope? 
Um, I just finished doing a series on Sunday morning. I just finished preaching about 25 minutes ago um, <laughs> on, uh, uh, on that very topic. But I was dealing with the end times perspectives because mm. I think even in the Christian world, our view of end times has created a lot of unnecessary anxiety. And yeah. uh, I, I have not read your revelation uh, uh, Bible yet. So I was going to say, maybe, maybe yeah. you could give us some insight on that. So there's two things. They might be dovetailed. But I'd like to yeah. hear your encouragement for even Canadians, Americans, those who are watching this around the world. Um, how do we approach this COVID-19 without becoming extremists or fear mongers or conspiracy theorists? How do we keep Jesus <laughs> as our vision and our center? No, it's, it's a large subject, you know, but what I so enjoy um, uh, the, 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 the clue of the gospel, you know, the key clue, that which ignites the word in our hearts is so much more than just some kind of debate that someone wins against another debate, you know. Yep. It's the unveiling of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that becomes so, so relevant. I remember for, for many years, Lydia and I, um, we were in tourism, uh, in the tourism industry, and we, we had a safari lodge, which we built years ago, and we would take people literally on walk, uh, on walks and game drives in, in, in the big five country, you know, where you would encounter the big five animals on foot, and you'd have them in, uh, on vehicle, you know, we'd go for our drives, and um, there's something in us, you know, as, as, as human beings, when we see something amazing, we desire to communicate it. We desire to draw others into the same opportunity, into the same view. And, and uh, you know, it, being, being in, in, in the, the thick of things, um, as it were, in 2020, you know, we're, we're, we're as, a, as a global community, we are faced with a situation that we've all had to come to terms with, you know, and, 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 and respond to. And, yep. um, and some know, are like Exactly, exactly, you know, and it's something you can't just wish away and try and, you know, turn your back, it doesn't exist, you know, or create oh my, your, yeah. your, your conspiracy theories and whatever you would like to attach some values to. But, you know, in the, in the context of planet Earth and us human beings alive on this planet right now, right here, you know, although we are communicating across this round, beautiful globe, you know, from, a, from the other side of the planet, we're sitting here in South Africa in a very remote, beautiful area against the Swartberg Mountains, but mm. there is a reference that we that we have access to that carries absolute global relevance. It is more relevant than any COVID scare or any pandemic or any thing that we've ever faced in our history or is still to face in the future and what we are facing right now. And and to me, you know, it is my pet subject to engage with the relevance of the gospel in the midst of contradiction. I remember mm. years ago, I, um, I had the privilege to, 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 to get a pilot's license, you know, on a, on for a light aircraft. And I was just speaking to my son about it last week, that he's facing quite some severe challenges in his business. And I said to, you know, um, I was just reminded how just soon after you do your solo flight, um, you have to start engaging with, 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 with crisis situations, you know, you, and it's scary. I mean, when, when the instructor is with you, you already go, oh, oh, you know, can this plane do this, you know, and, yeah. and you've got to go through these the rituals where you, where you literally have to um, uh, 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 be faced with any possible um, crisis situation, you know, and, and being able to deal with it and think straight and think, okay, this is what I do. And as you do it, you realize that the plane is designed to respond to a certain um, uh, um, relevant procedure and mm. I, i'm so i'm so incredibly and in, in uh, confident in 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 an understanding that belongs to the entire world just this afternoon when lydia and i went for our walk it's a it's a beautiful place you know and it's just an amazing you, you, and i was just thinking about our conversation this um, today i was going to say this evening but i know it's not evening everywhere else in the on the planet <laughs> but in this conversation to realize that how we wish to draw people into a view that that will strike their hearts it will strike home in, and again to reflect on our safari days 
you know, we bring people into a situation and you don't have to educate people how to respond. You just share the same reference. And mm. in that reference, there might be, you know, we normally have about 10 people in our group, either on the vehicle or in the group where we're walking. And um, you, you, just, you just point them in the right direction and then you wait for them to see for themselves. Mm. That you, you must be fun. That and, must and be exactly, fun. Right? <laughs> yeah, and the idea of the safari is not so that each one has a little private encounter and then nobody tells anyone else what they saw. And then tonight when you get back at the campfire, you know, then we kind of brag out, oh, I saw a leopard, you know, <laughs> sorry about you guys. We're in the same family, we're in the same unit, and we desire to share the same reference. So I'm so glad that we're dealing with the gospel that is not something that we thought up, something that we fabricated. You know, when, when Peter speaks um, many years later, when he eventually also started to, to, to write, you know, learn to write as a fisherman, they were not illiterate. So... Um, he speaks about his encounter with James and John, with Jesus on the mountain and Elijah and Moses. He says, we didn't suck this out of our thumbs. You know, we, we're not busy with some cleverly devised myth. We were eyewitnesses. We, we heard that voice. We encountered the dynamic of a conversation that pointed away from everything that Moses represents and everything that Elijah represents, not to discard them, but to, con to, to connect the dots, you know, to, to bring Moses and Elijah into perspective, to bring scripture into perspective. There is only one valid perspective of scripture, not our thousands and thousands of libraries full of commentaries about our no. views on this or our views on that. But it's the, the, the man, Jesus Christ, the incarnate image and likeness of the the creator of the universe, the engineer of the universe, found and exhibits a, a, a perfect display of their being mm. in human life. And so, so you, God is, yeah. Do you think that th this crisis that uh, appears to have hit the world um, is revealing um, uh, a truth that people aren't aware is there? Like right now, they've been living their lives, hum-ho, self-controlled, doing their own their own world, um, and now this crisis comes, and now they have to deal with things they never thought they had to deal with, including the gospel. Now yeah, everything comes yeah. into question. Everything's coming to the forefront that was never yeah. dealt with. Do you, ever, do you think that some yeah. of that's yeah, For sure. I mean, any, any crisis does that. You know, and sometimes it takes a crisis to take your focus away from, from just the rituals of the day and, and, and even, even away from, you know, the, the – the, um, the letter of the law, you know, and, and my doctrines and stuff that I'm attaching value to because a crisis brings a, a, a very severe testing. And that's why I so enjoy, you know, one of my early, early um, understandings when, 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 when it comes to the gospel was in the book of James. And in fact, I started with, with James chapter one uh, when I started the Mirror Bible translation where, where, where James conf confronts us with, with every type of contradiction. And a crisis of any dimension. And then he says, count it all joy when you meet various uh, contradictions. You know, it's, it, it, it sounds so wrong. It sounds so, listen, how can I possibly bring joy into this? I mean, when I'm faced with a very, very real um, uh, crisis and in a situation like the COVID, like, like we, we, we read the reports and we, we, you know, we're trying you know, keep keep the statistics current and we're trying to find out what's it like in this country, in that country. I mean, we, yeah. we've had several challenges you know, in, our, in our own situation. But the, the beauty is, and, and the point that I want to make is that when Jesus speaks about building your house on the rock, um, he's speaking about a, a, a storm-proof life, a life that is designed to be so steadfast in the midst of the most severe storm. You know, when these storms break loose, they break loose with the same vengeance and the same um, power and, 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 and uh, energy than uh, on the two houses, the one that's built on the sand and the one that's built on the rock. And, and the, 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 the beauty of the gospel is that the gospel unveils not a set of principles that we're trying to bear witness to, but it, it, the, the, the gospel unveils the integrity of our original identity, of our design. You see, connecting the house to the rock is digging beyond the surface, going beyond those first reactions and responses, because we're mm -hmm. all faced with, with all kinds of stuff that happens to us daily, never mind the COVID. I mean, people, you know, we, we've kind of made much of the COVID because 
because it suddenly took the stage. But yep. um, you know, we we, we we have some beautiful friends that are that are medical doctors and people and medical staff. You know, they they, they confronted with their with their real stuff. I mean, they, they've got a it's, it's a death and life situation they deal with daily. You know, but yeah. to to be able to communicate. A, a good news. I mean, we, we, we've been bombarded with bad news. We've been exactly. bombarded with stuff that your mind freaks out about. You know, you think, how can I try and just keep sane in the midst of all this? But well, then fear, discover- fear sells. It's, it's, it's the thing that we're drawn to. Our news yeah. channel, we're all about fear, fear, fear. It's like, wait exactly. a minute. Exactly. got to be exactly. something bad. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, what, what startled me is about this, you know, is how quickly, the, especially the contagious element, the fact that this thing can just, you've got to wear the mask because you, you, you pass it on to the next person and you're trying to keep them safe. You don't want to in, uh, inhale their breath. And, and, and suddenly this, this virus took on global proportions, second to nothing that we've ever encountered. I'm, I'm sure in our history, you know, we, we can re- date back many, many similar crises. But today we're living in, a, in, an, in an age where something happens anywhere on the planet and it's global news. You know, everybody yeah. knows about it. Mm-hmm. And if it's possible, for a virus to have such an incredible quick um, spread not just in its in its in its presence but in its in, in its newsworthiness how much more can we communicate a gospel that that is designed tailor made for a global community mm. in such a way and, and, and unless we come as a, as a the so-called church or a, a believing society, come to terms with the essence of the gospel, we were able to communicate a reality that translates into how do I deal with the personal crisis that I'm facing, maybe in my domestic life or in my financial situation, or then in my health situation as this crisis has been dictating, that to, mm-hmm. to discover a safe place, you know, where, where I'm, I'm anchored in the, in the foundation that is stronger than the threat that, that comes against me. And it's so beautiful to realize that that rock reality is not true for some people. I, I, I wrote a, a chapter um, well, I engage, enlarge the chapter now in the, in the latest release of Divine Embrace on, on for those facing tough times. I just want to read you the little opening sure. um, statement of that chapter. I think it's chapter 25. Um, yeah, it says here, what hell... Uh, I, I, <laughs> I said to you that all of us face contradictions. I'm just cutting into it. And um, are often tempted to give the contradiction a stronger voice than what it deserves. Mm. What God spoke to mankind in the incarnate Christ is absolutely true for every single human life, whether we believe it or not. You know, the relevance of the full implication of God's love dream uh, de- declared and demonstrated in Christ often uh, remains veiled to us because our circumstances seem to be more real. And I said yeah, that God is not nearer to some than what he is to others. He's equally inseparably Emmanuel to every mm. person on the planet. And, and to realize that, listen, we, 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 we can speak with a voice of clarity and authority into a situation where people are really feeling the goosebumps of the fear or the, or the, uh, the you know, it, it feels like fear is just strangling me in, in this situation. But there's such good news, you know, <laughs> when, when James, when James speaks about joy, it seems like totally madness. I mean, you, you don't understand my situation. You say, I kind of well, feel that my situation deserves to, you know, I, 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 I need to, I need to be heard, but to, to hear, a voice that brings clarity and focus and freedom from fear and freedom from anxiety and mm-hmm. uh, a, a concern about what's going to happen tomorrow. And then the, the next time we start seeing all kinds of ghosts coming out, you know, spooky stuff happening on the horizon and, 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 and the whole global trouble that the world seems to be in. But to realize that we're part of a, of a much larger perspective of zooming out into God's perspective and then zooming in to God's thoughts about me, that mm. I count to him, I matter to my father as an individual. And they just bring such a shift in our, in our entire dealing with, with whatever it is you know, that, that, that this, this crisis spells out in terms of fear. Yeah, I, think, I think some people, they, they don't even believe God really likes them even. Like there's a lot of believers yeah. who don't even yeah. think God likes yeah. them he has yeah. to love them. That's his job. Yeah. But to yeah. l- like them even, to want yeah. intimacy, to want connection, that's a, a whole new revelation. And maybe yeah. this 
cases is revealing the need for that to become real. To exactly. Them. Yeah. And are there such a such a, a absolute um, need for people to discover their identity and to yeah. discover that in their identity there's a worth that God knows that they've perhaps never seen for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, one of my most most favorite um, connections with this reality is that. The story that we often tell, we live in, a, in an area um, where a hundred years ago, the ostrich feathers um, became like gold. You know, we live quite, quite close to Otsuren. And, um, and uh, 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 Otsuren's in the Western Cape, South Africa. Okay. It's in the Western Cape. And, and uh, well, a hundred years ago, plus hundred, it's more than a hundred years ago now, the, 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 the ostrich feathers just took, took off like a boom. And it was just amazing the, the money that it was, that was uh, paid for, 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 for the weight of an ostrich feather, feather equal to gold. And wow. um, we have a fantastic story that I tell a million times. You know, it's just the most beautiful story that unveils the, the reality of the individual's worth. This um, uh, is a true story. Of course, it, it, it happened in a in a family that we are very um, well known. Uh, we, we know them pr- for many years, and their great grandmother was engaged a hundred years ago to one of the richest farmers, ostrich farmer here in Otsuren. Mm. They literally had a gold plated horse cart, you know, and and, oh and they would mix with with the high and mighty, you know, the members of parliament, the people in, of influence, and. And during their engagement, she had an encounter with Jesus, and, and it, she just became like totally um, uh, absorbed with 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 this with this wonderful encounter of Jesus. And and uh, for some reason, you know, the engagement did not last. You know, maybe the man felt threatened. You know, but it wouldn't be good for business to have this lady. Anyway, they, they were, there was um, uh, she was sent back to the Free State, which is one of the provinces in South Africa where she comes from, and um, there she married. A man who was very poor. She fell in love with this person, of course, and and uh, we call them a. Uh, oh, I can't remember what the English word is, uh, but but it it was a time where during the, it was also during the depression or just before, yeah before the Great Depression in South Africa. And so this man didn't own his own land, but at the mercy of a farmer, he was another farmer. He was given land that he could then finance himself and do his own uh, project on. And then eventually, if he gets enough money, then he can buy the land. So after seven years, they bought this land, and. Um, uh, some time after they took title to this to this farm, the first gold in the Free State was was, was um, discovered on their farm. Oh wow! And um, you know, that area was still, still today is known for its maize. You know, so it was a maize farm. And um, she wrote a document at that time. You know that for many many years we have only seen this land, this agricultural field, as a, as a maize producing field. But the gold's been there all along. And our problem is we have plowed too shallow. You know? oh, wow. And that, that gold happened to be, I think, at that time, the deepest. And um, uh, it was also at a time where they discovered certain ways of drilling deeper than ever before when they got onto this. And still today, it's one of the richest reefs in the world. But the beauty was, you know, that this, that this discovery gave an immediate new value to that same piece of land. And it's so mirrors what Jesus says in Matthew 13, 44, when he says the kingdom of heaven is like a, a man discovering a treasure in an agricultural field. Oh, wow. And to realize that this field is revealing this human life that we engage with. Because mm-hmm. his audience at that time in Matthew were, were, the, were the Jews, obviously, and they were farmers and they were businessmen. And they were immediately intrigued by the idea that there's a man who discovers a treasure in an agricultural field. Because in the Greek, it says agricultural field. It wasn't just a normal piece of field. So this field had a known value. It was farmed in a certain way. And you could expect a certain return if you do the certain, you know, and if the weather is good and you've got good rainfall, then this is the kind of harvest that you can expect. But then... Jesus startles his audience. He says, this man who finds the treasure hides it again. One would think, but why? You know, why would you go and hide it? Because Jesus is on a mission to reveal something that will startle us beyond anything else with the value that God sees in each one of us. So what does he do? He hides the field. And the Jews scratch their heads thinking, well, this man's got a plan. You know, he, he, he's going to the market because maybe that field is a neglected field. It's overgrown with thorns and thistles. And, and he'll be able to offer the biggest bargain price to redeem that land. And then Jesus shocks them. 
He says, this man goes away and he sells all that he has and he buys the entire field. Mm. Now we need to understand that um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24 verse 1, the world and those who dwell in it. At no time does a thief become owner. Hmm. And yet in our theologies, we've made the devil of every definition owner of the majority of this planet, of the majority of the people on the planet. And he is identified as the father of lies. There is only one true father of the human race. We did not begin in America or in Canada or in Europe or anywhere else on this geographic planet of ours. We did not even begin in our mother's womb. God says to Jeremiah 1.5, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. You see, Mm. the fact that God knows us gives such relevance to the value that God knows is hidden as the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations in us. And it's Christ in you. You see, Christ, Christ was in ethnos. It's Christ in the nations, not to Christ in the, the most holy saint in town, you know. Mm-hmm. But Christ hidden in every person's heart. And when we begin to see that, we think differently about people. We see people differently. We have the best news possible to communicate because it's value driven and it's not a thumb suck it's not us trying to tell people to feel a little bit better about themselves it's giving them the evidence yeah of the gold that's discovered and the incarnation just brings such perspective the so word becoming flesh so a question that was would often be asked in the, uh, in the story of your field is when did that person who owned the field become a millionaire was it when they discovered the gold or was it when they first bought the land? Because the gold's been there the whole time, right? It's been there all along. Yeah. So you see, the value, people don't know the value they have in Christ. And in fact, I think it was Paul who said, because um, the Western way of thinking, uh, when we, we have to ask Jesus to come into our heart as if he's absent. Yeah. Um, exactly. The transactional thing. But when people can discover they already have been of value, and Paul described himself as exactly. uh, Christ was revealed in me, not to me, external. Yeah, exactly. In me. Yeah. That, that's a yeah. real big yeah. piece of evidence that yeah. the to ignore. It's exactly that. You know, when uh, our youngest son lived in, in Switzerland, um, Stefan, and he's, he's married now, they're actually expecting the, the, um, their first child now in the next month, I think November. And um, so I've, I've had several little nights, many opportunities. Her sister lived there for 35 years. So we've often been to Switzerland. And, and one of my favorite subjects, you know, I get the opportunity to speak to some Swiss businessmen, for instance, or even in the, in the, in the, in the um, church context. And, and to tell them, you know, that much of South Africa's gold, I mean, from other areas too, but much of our South African gold are now hidden in bank vaults underneath the ground in Switzerland, you know. And, and so it's, we've dug it out of one hole. And we've transported it and hide it now in another hole. And it's, it's hidden, but it's, it was hidden while it was not undiscovered. But the moment it is discovered, it's the same metal, but mm. it becomes currency. Yeah. That's why we communicate the gospel. You know, if the gospel was just some, some interesting information, then let's, let's try and compete, you know, and arm wrestle around my idea and your idea, your doctrine and my doctrine. But when the gospel is the unveiling of the currency value of the individual, and by currency, you know, we've, we, we, we've adopted, we've, we've actually created um, the idea of currency so that we can somehow add value to the time that we exchange from day to day to, to try and make sense of our lives on planet Earth. But there's a currency, there's a, there's a divine currency that ignites in someone's heart. It has nothing to do with their job description. It has nothing to do with the degree of their contradictions. You see, when James speaks about joy in the midst of contradictions, it's not a joy that I'm trying to fabricate and wind up, you know, try and just get myself into a happy mode. He yeah. says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So mm-hmm. there's something that you don't buy over a counter. You can't get hands laid on for some special <laughs> anointing of joy. You, you connect your joy with something that you know. Faith knows. Faith unveils. And everyone is wired by the engineer of the universe to discover faith. Faith is not something I do in order to influence God. Something is, Faith is what happens to me when I realize the value that God's love sees in me. 
Sometimes we think God's love is just, you know, God's just feeling he's in a good mood today. And he's going to be nice towards you because you were nice. You've done something good along the yep. way. You know, somewhere in my youth or childhood, I must have done something good. There's, there's no way I could be so blessed, you know, by, by just coincidence. You know? yep. We have every blessing that heaven has is is lavished upon us as a human race. And what an opportunity in the midst of darkness, in the midst of COVID-19, uh, is it 19? What, if, what, whatever this COVID's <laughs> number is, you know, and in yep. the midst of the most severe contradiction financially or whatever it shows up, is to find a joy rooted in the rock of ages, mm. realizing that I began in God's thought and his mind full of me. God doesn't have you somewhere, you know, filed away, you know, and he's it's dusted up over the years. And, and then he remembers when you've prayed long enough and hard enough to, oh, whoa, 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 I've forgotten about this one. God says his mind full of you. God's mm. mind is full of you. Why? Is God just trying to be nice? He knows you. He knows you and invites us to know even as we have always been known. Wow. And the beauty of this illustration is that that gold carries the exact quality in its hidden form than what it has when it's, once it's discovered and weighed and, and it becomes part of the dynamic of the currency in the world markets. You know, if you could imagine the millions, the trillions of dollars worth of aircraft, fleets of whatever um, business you can imagine that is held and sustained by gold, just some metal that's lying there, no longer dormant, but discovered. Yep. And that's the beauty, and that's the gospel, you know, for people to discover, to see unveiled. That's why I, I call the, 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 the mirror Bible, uh, the mirror Bible, you know, because really it's, it's Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, now with unveiled faces, we are beholding the glory of the Lord. So are, when are, we are, behold it, so just, our hope is, just sorry, sorry there's just one said, we're beholding the glory of the Lord, not as in a display window. Yeah. But as in a mirror, you see, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. For so long, we've even studied scripture in a display window kind of mentality, a window shopping mentality, where I'm underlining and claiming all the lovely promises. But when I discover the mirror reality, I discover something that is more real about me than any idea I've ever thought I could you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, claim for myself. The ugly duckling didn't suddenly become an, a beautiful swan. It's been a beautiful swan all along. But its mind was confused. Yeah. It had a confused mind and a confused identity. So it's so beautiful in this, in this crisis time to just hold up the mirror and allow people to see for themselves mm -hmm. the, through the Father's eyes, you know, how, how in, 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 invaluable you are, priceless you are. He paid that. He, he sold all he had. He was bought with the priceless blood of Christ. From the lies that we believed about ourselves. Those lies, those lies can no longer hold true. Oh, but the things that contribute to those lies um, seem to have people in such great bondage. Shame uh, is a yeah, huge one. Exactly. Being hurt by people and us hurting people and we feel shameful. All of those messages build up and build up. And there's, it's almost like a crust that's hindering us from seeing us as we really yeah. are. So. Yeah. Uh, in the mirror translation, what I've really enjoyed is what you've just said. It's unpacking. You, sh you get to see yourself as you originally were, but yeah. are having a hard time even believing that. So how can that be true? How could it have yeah. been always true? I thought I, I had to be good in order to become. Yeah. I thought yeah. I had to be good in order for God to be near. You know, And if yeah. I'm bad, he's distant. That's yeah. why I keep learning. Yeah, you know, the, you know the, the, there are only two trees in the garden, you know, and, and Paul speaks about two laws in, in, Re, in Romans chapter 3, 27. And those two laws are the two laws that govern society. And, in, and you know, in the context of, of Paul's understanding, he speaks about, but now the, the righteousness of God is revealed. He speaks, I'm not, in the first chapter, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. And then he says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. And he's mm -hmm. speaking about what God did right, not what Adam did wrong, or what we did wrong, or where we just fell short, because that's the tree of the, the I am not tree, you know, against the yeah. I am tree. So, so, so he's... And he says it so beautifully in Romans 3.27, and in the mirror, you'll, you'll enjoy it there. Because in the commentary, I mentioned the fact that um, 
Well, when Paul asked this, I still remember from the Revised Standard Version days, I used to read the Revised Standard for many, many years, where Paul says, you know, what becomes of our boasting? And he's speaking to the Jews, because now in the context of, uh, you've all fallen short, you know, but, but thank God the, the people who fell short, we've made verse 23, the gospel, but the gospel is in verse 24. They all are now justified by the grace of God. You know, it's a gift. And, and he says, but now what becomes of our boasting? In the context of, this is, not some, this is a gift. It's gift language. It's not reward language. So in the context of, of the gift, what becomes of our boasting? He says, it's excluded. It's like, what do you mean by that, Paul? I mean, that we've built our entire uh, industry around our religion on the basis of how do we fare when we hold up um, our lifestyle and our behavior against the Ten Commandments. And he says, it is excluded. He says, by which law? And then he calls them. He says, the, the law of performance? He says, no, definitely not performance. Mm. And that's, unfortunately, where most of society is locked in, locked into people's marriages, their relationships, their businesses. Everything is performance related. So does that mean we just, you know, we just kind of sit back and stop performing? He says, no, there's another law. And he, he says it's called the law of faith. Now, mm. when I pondered this many years ago, I suddenly saw it. I saw it, realized, you know, that, that the operating system behind the law of performance is willpower. Mm. Now, willpower yeah. is, a, is, a, is a known reality to all of us. I mean, you can get someone to do something by offering him either a great reward or if you can make him scared enough. Yeah, exactly. The punishment that's going to follow. Yourself. So that law is where religion is stuck in the mud and mm -hmm. most of society. You know, if we, we, we're constantly law driven because we, we, we've got to get that reward. I've, I'll do this work. I hate doing this job, but I'll do it for the salary. You know what I mean? So, so I feel, okay, there's some kind of reward coming. Or, you know, the, the problem is you get people to follow Jesus out of fear. And, and especially with eschatology thoughts that's going around you know, everywhere. You know, you've got to keep them scared. You've got to feed their fear. Otherwise, you know, they're going to be independent of you. So mm -hmm. if, there's, if there are two, oh, whoa, if there are two laws, if the one is the one of performance and the other one is called the law of faith, how does faith operate? If willpower is the power behind performance, then willpower surely could compete with faith. It cannot. We're speaking about two different worlds here. You mm. see, if my willpower, if my positive decision making could save me, then Moses would be my savior. Paul yeah. calls his shots in Romans chapter 7, verse 1. He says, I'm speaking to those who are familiar, who are acquainted with the law. And he yeah. was running right in front, you know, in his acquaintance with the law. He says, let's be honest about it, you know. The good things that we want to do, we fail to do. What, what, the, the good things that my willpower tries to urge me to do. And we've, we've done brilliantly in the realm of willpower. I mean, our athletes are examples of people that excel yeah. in, in driving and commitment. And, and, we give them, and, we, and we give them gold as a reward. Of of, co of course, exactly. So the, the reward thing is big. It's huge. If, if we just kind of sit back for a moment and look at our own lives, you know, take perspective on, wow, am I reward driven or am I faith driven? How does faith work? If performance works, f performance works by willpower, how does faith work? Faith worketh by love. <laughs> love mm. ignites faith. You see, and love is not some, some uh, goosebumpy feeling that we have from time to time. Love is immediately value-related. Mm. We are value-conscious. Job 28 is one of the oldest books, perhaps the oldest book in the Bible. And he, spe he speaks about how the um, birds of prey and the beasts of the field have no appetite for gold. They don't dig holes <laughs> yeah. in the ground and uproot mountains to try and get little pieces of dust of gold. But no. man would eat his full. Job 28 verse 5 says that man has eaten his full. He's, he's, he's harvested his own labor. He's harvested his, his bread, but he remains hungry. So what does he do? He, in the valleys, you know, where, where his eyes can no longer, he, he digs holes, he, he builds shafts, and, he, and he's driven to try and find some kind of exchange for mm. this hunger, this drive within him. For, uh, uh, because we are the only value conscious beings in that re regards. Wow. That's what makes us different from the animal world. The animals are okay with just, you know, just feeling safe and surviving and, you know, hunting their prey and eating and, and, and making babies. And there we go, you know. <laughs> but as humans, we, we have a different appetite. We have an appetite that is not satisfied by eating bread alone. 
mm-hmm. by just eating the, the fruit of our own hands, hands labor and what we can bring to the table. But when we discover the gold where it was hidden all along, mm. not somewhere in outer space, or let's go over the waters, you know, to another country and find it there, or another job, or another wife, or another this, or another that, or a better car, or a better this device, but to discover the gold where it was hidden all along, right, right there within you. Can I ask a question and, about faith? Please. Um, I love where you're going with the the comparison how does galatians 220 kind of fit in or does it when it talks about the faith of christ because somehow i'm hearing a bridge of the faith is actually a gift given to us versus something something we muster up does that tie in somehow with this yeah the, the, the faith only has one authentic source you know, we can make believe, we can, we, can, we can feel positive and confident and persuaded about something, but, you know, our persuasion doesn't make something true. Right. You know, for, for, for centuries, um, we believed yeah, that the earth was flat, and there are still people believing in a flat world, by the way. But, but yeah. in, you know, when, when, it, when, when it suddenly we, we discover that, hey, we're actually in a, in a round globe, you know, it's a round planet, you know, it doesn't suddenly become true when you believe it. It's been true all yeah. along. But our faith, only our authentic faith only has one source. The father, the author of faith, the author and finisher of faith. Jesus Mm -hmm. didn't do something so that we can meet him halfway. He went all the way with faith. And what makes faith relevant is the fact that we are wired by design to believe. And that mm. believing is something that happens inside of you. You can't, you can't put it in a nice little pretty definition. And I've got my doctrine on faith very well defined. But it's, it's like falling in love. You know, you don't go to kissing school when you fall in love. Something happens in you and you're wired to, to feel <laughs> these feelings and to feel intimate and to feel engaged. You know, <laughs> so yeah. I'm losing this. I don't know whether I've got it in the wrong ear or something, but here we go. It, it'll, <laughs> I can still hear you. I can Wonderful. hear you. All righty, that's it for the first half. Um, <laughs> uh, he was just getting ramped up. The second half's a really amazing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you've never met Francois Dutoy, he's, uh, he's the one who uh, has been translating many New Testament um, books of the Bible. Um, he calls it the mirror translation. Uh, it's worth the read. It's like, now, if you're, if you're not familiar with the mirror, but you've ever, if you've ever heard of the... Um, Oh shoot! Now I forget it. Ah, oh, there's a there's another one that's really expanded. Has a lot of um, commentary all the way through it. When I remember it, I'll tell you. But anyway, fantastic book. Um, I hope you enjoyed his heart. Um, there's much more coming next week that you'll really really enjoy. Uh, I hope you'll join us next time for that. Would love to uh, hear your comments. I'm not going to read through all the comments. Uh, there's way too many that have come up as a result of what was being shared by Francois. Uh, we went a little longer today. Next week will only be one hour exactly. I can guarantee that. Um, so anyway, let's see what else is on here. So next week, part two, fear not. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed part one. It was enough of a tease for you to, to check in next week. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. That's all I've got. So thank you for those that make your online donations, uh, monthly, weekly, annually, however you do it. Thank you. Uh, if you value and appreciate what you're hearing, um, make you know, support it. it. It's great. We're going to do a Zoom call right after I go offline. Um, and... If you don't have the link because you're not on the email list, send me a private message on Facebook. As soon as we're live in about five minutes in the Zoom call, then I can copy and paste the link and you can join in and say hello. It's only going to be like 15 minutes, half hour at the most. Um, So we'd love to have you join in. Those that are watching from their cottages or beaches, uh, I see Brian saying hi from the beach. So thrilled to... uh, uh, no, you're enjoying it. And I think it's going to be like really, really hot today. Thank you everyone for joining in and we will catch you next week. Um, it'll be great. Catch you then.